Okay, back again and welcome back. So this time we're continuing with planning. So in planning, you'll see on the right hand side the uh, processes in the uh, uh, or the knowledge areas. These are the subject matter expertise. This is you, project management integration. So you'll notice on page 25 of the PMBOK guide, you look across to the right. Those are your processes to manage all of the 49 processes so or so so the main purpose of planning is to guide the execution and control remember in predictive it's a spirit of control to reduce risks to build the deliverable on schedule on cost on budget we'll call that the iron triangle picture a triangle and they always have to stay tight and in sync with each other okay and there are lots of ways to do that key planning items that you can read for yourself the thing about planning is oh my gosh if you look on page 25 of the PMBOK guide every single knowledge area is there uh, and uh, there are just uh, dozens of processes right where do I begin well like eating an elephant Start with one bite at a time. It doesn't really matter. I highly recommend following the order in the PMBOK guide, but remember, it's all kind of fluid in integrating. If I have a hyper risk averse stakeholder, I might start with risk management first before I define my scope. In general, though, I'm going to start with defining scope. If you look on page 25, you can follow that logic. So uh, the planning objectives, right? Here we want to detail the management plans to develop a single centralized plan that we can control. Now this plan will be called management plans. It's also known by the term subsidiary plans because these are now sub plans, these management plans, to the overall project management plan, which is what you're responsible for. If you look on page 25, 4.2, develop project management plan that's in integration management that's you and you're developing all of these subsidiary plans and these subsidiary plans then become constraints on the other management plans i can't have more scope than i have budget to uh, develop it right and so we're going to then as we develop these management plans we're going to establish as project managers a project life cycle with the phases like a design phase a test phase an implementation phase and we're also going to use besides the life cycle something called the developmental approach we have to determine that is it going to be a predictive or waterfall project or is it going to be an agile or change driven project uh, which has iterative and incremental aspects or is it a hybrid right this is what we're going to have to determine the life cycle and the developmental approach right so here you see uh, the iron triangle is also it when it's talked about it can be talked about individually scope baseline schedule baseline cost baseline or if i talk about it collectively i could refer to it as the performance measurement baseline or pmb sometimes known as the iron triangle also just to review progressive elaboration means even though i have initiating planning executing controlling and closing ipec i may go from initiating to planning to closing if i find it it's not feasible i might recommend that to the sponsor i might go from initiating planning to executing and in executing i'm going to go back and forth between executing and monitoring and controlling because i will learn stuff and i will make uh, approved changes here and put them back into execution here right and uh, i may go from uh, just any number of variations there now, as you're planning, right, we're, we are developing through process 4.2, the project management plan with all of its subsidiary plans. And the PMBOK guide uh, lists, I think it's page 87, but I don't have it in front of me. Look around. It'll list uh, in a single chart what's in the project management plan and what are in project documents. 
these are in the project management plane. So what I wanted to point out is in the project management plane, you'll have 10 other management plans. You'll have uh, uh, other management plans like change and configuration, so 12 total. You will have uh, a performance measurement baseline, which will include the three individual baselines of scope, schedule, cost. Uh, you'll have your life cycle, which are your phases, and your developmental cycle. And uh, so uh, these, so if you'll notice, uh, for example, the process 6.1 called plan schedule management is going to have as an output the schedule management plan. 7.1 co plan cost management is going to have as an output cost management plan. It's very common. Notice that some of them produce two plans, right? Like in 4. Uh, when I develop the project management plan, uh, 4.2, I'm going to get my change uh, management plan. When I develop my project management plan 4.2, I'm also going to get my configuration management plan. Notice also plan scope management has two key outputs, the scope management plan and the requirements management plan. Okay. I uh, will discuss in detail how we get them, but just, just know this is just for orientation, just to give you a sense of of where I'm getting my project management plan. Now, uh, the planning roadmap looks like this, and I've just broken down uh, what on the right-hand side is from the PMBOK guide, page 25. These are the processes in 4.2. This is what I do, develop project management plan uh, by running these processes. So uh, first I'm going to create the, pro I'm gonna determine how I'm going to build my project management plan to start to put my team together and I'm going to list some of the high level objectives from the business case. Then I'm going to develop the requirements. This relates to scope here. This is in general, right? I just mentioned I could do risk management first, right? If I had a hyper risk averse uh, stakeholder, key stakeholder. And from that, I'm going to create a work breakdown structure. And you'll see that listed in 5.4. It's a process, but this is kind of in English what I'm doing. Then I'm going to start, once I have my requirements, to plan the schedule by defining the activities, putting them in an order called sequencing them, estimating durations, etc. And then I'm going to plan my budget. And then at this point, I have a good sense of my iron triangle. Now, continuing with that line of thought, then I'm going to finish uh, quality resource and communications planning uh, and some notes there just to describe that. Then I'm going to plan risk, including both qualitative, which is a subjective assessment of my risks, just to put them in a prioritized order. And then I'm going to do quantitative, which you notice is numerical probability and impact. At this point, I'm going to just assess the ones with the biggest probability and impact that really would devastate my project, right? Then I'm going to do some wrap-up planning, right? I'm going to finalize the plan. I'm going to make sure my integrated change control process is done. I'm going to get it signed off by the sponsor or sponsors and then have a kickoff meeting. Yay! Uh, after planning is generally execution. And again, on the right-hand side, is a look from page 25 of the PMBOK guide. Uh, and, and it's getting her done, right? Get her done. I'm going to collect data called work performance data as I work to produce the deliverables. And I'm going to request changes from people, right? And I'm also, whoops, going to implement approved changes in uh, 4.3. Uh, I'm also going to manage uh, project knowledge. As project managers, we have a responsibility to make sure knowledge gets out there. We want to share our lessons learned uh, and, and create new knowledge as project managers. We're going to do quality planning, right, including quality assurance making sure we're following the processes that we've defined, and even do quality audits, love an audit, right? Then I'm going to focus on the team. That's, uh, I'm going to uh, acquire the team, uh, develop and manage the team, etc. cetera. Uh, continuing with execution, just wrapping it up, I'm going to manage communications, project knowledge, which has two terms, explicit knowledge and tacit knowledge. We'll go over those in class and um, 
conduct procurements, right? Now here's uh, one of the keys. In, in execution, I am managing, I said. So I notice uh, many of the uh, processes either have the term manage in them, so I know I'm in the executing process group, or you surmise management. Like when I acquire resources, I have to manage. When I develop a team, that requires management skills. Um, when I manage the team, of course, manage skills and manage quality, right? Only two processes that don't really say it, which is conduct procurements and uh, implement risk responses. So, uh, but otherwise, manage is really the focus of execution. Then I'm going to monitor and control. So I'm always comparing my plan versus my actual results uh, by using uh, processes 4.5 and 4.6 in Brown. And to do that, I'm always looking for corrective action, preventive action, or defect repair. Now, pr corrective action are to bring expected performance in line with notice actual deviations, where preventive action is for anticipated deviations, okay? Uh, in this, again, a same process. In the left is just kind of the English version of what the PMBOK guide is trying to show you through the processes, right? I'm going to measure the baselines, measure, 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 comparing the plan to the actual results. I'm going to compare it to the baselines, other metric, metrics. I'm looking for variances, and I take charge. I want to correct them. I will request changes, and in this process, perform integrated change control, or ICC. This is where a change gets reviewed and by a board uh, approved. If it's approved, it goes back into several other processes, such as quality control and um, uh, direct and manage project work. Uh, continuing with monitor and control, there's a communications component to it. There's uh, uh, quality control, risk, and uh, procurements, which you can read the summaries for yourself. Then in the end, I'm going to close uh, the process uh, or phase. The closing process group is the end, end of the phase or end of the project, right? Uh, and so regardless, I want to wrap up all the data, get feedback, do lessons learned. Uh, I even, at the end of every process, uh, every, every closed process or phase, I want to do a uh, sort of uh, review, go, no-go decision. It's a gate check, right? Are we meeting our objectives and should we move forward to the next uh, phase? Right, that's a gate check. I will always close out the project no matter what the circumstances are. When the phase is complete, when the project is complete, or even if the project is terminated, right? Uh, with procurements, I don't wait for closing the project phase. I'll close them as they end, right? We want to wrap up a contract neatly. And so, again, we have this in the closing process group. It's kind of funny. There is only the one process, uh, but uh, we have a number of things going on. We want to uh, confirm the work was done according to the requirements, and that's our quality control, sharing the product uh, and the requirements uh, with the technologists or the subject matter experts with the company and letting them do their own inspections. To uh, This is a formal acceptance, and I want to get them to sign off on the product, the customer that they accept it. And that's a process called validate scope. We'll talk about that in the course. I'm gonna finalize all process activities. I'm gonna hand the product off once it's signed off. I'm gonna close procurements, resolving any open items. I'm gonna solicit feedback, do finalize reports. I'm gonna update my reports. I don't just say, hey, I'm done, they accepted it. No, you update them because this report, your plan is gonna go on a shelf and it will be used as a historical document for a future plan of a similar type of project. So I'm going to archive or index the records. And of course, always, always, always do lessons learned during closing. But philosophically, as a project manager, you are always collecting lessons learned. That was fun. I hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, we will uh, come back. Thank you very much.